I'm going to show you seven tips on how to use ClickUp to scale your business. Whether you're an agency or a service provider or a coach, then ClickUp is the best place for you to scale your business and manage your projects and your tasks. I don't really use ClickUp for data management, meaning I don't have here like a CRM of clients or like my finances or anything like that. I use a proper data solution like Airtable, but I'm going to give you seven tips for ClickUp. Let's get started with the first one. First thing you need to be aware of is the custom fields that you're creating. For example, over here, you can go and click up and create a lot of fields, but it's hard to maintain. So you really need to pay attention to the amount of custom fields that you're creating. Only create the necessary ones. For me, I always create the role, the work category, and the client. It's really a standard process here on ClickUp to create custom fields. So these ones are the ones that I do use. Then I also have the reporter, which is another field that I use a lot on ClickUp, meaning a person who is going to be responsible to unblock this task or review this task if it needs to be reviewed. Then I also use the custom task ID because sometimes it's hard to refer to tasks if you're just going to have a long name over here. So I use a task ID and you can turn the task ID into something custom because the task itself could have like a really random name. So you could just give it a name like design, dev, ops, sales. So then it has that prefix and a number like ops one, ops two, ops three. So don't create too many custom fields. This is my first tip. Let's get to the second tip. Create dashboards for the team members. Let me give you an example. When your team members are going to log on ClickUp, there's going to be a lot of tasks. So instead of just giving them a long list of tasks, create a dashboard where they can just go and they can view only their tasks. For example, over here, you can see like their bookmark space. We have added this little GIF and also here's a search option as well as viewing their priorities. At this point, we have also added the open tasks filtered by the assignee. And also here we have added a space for quick notes. This will make it easy for them to keep some notes over time if they want to remember a couple of things that they need to do. And then over here we have the reporter task where they can go and check the tasks that they need to review or the tasks where they need to unblock the person who is easy assignee. So make sure to leverage dashboards because they can be really helpful for the day-to-day -day tasks management for your team members. Number three, you need to have a process library within your ClickUp. That means the template tasks, template lists or folders that you're going to create per client. For example, if you're doing meta ads for your clients, they need to have a template list within your client folder. You're going to have that list called meta ads, and that's how you're going to manage the meta ads tasks. Now, every delivery is different, so you don't always need to have one folder, one list, one service. Sometimes you could have media buying, which could be meta ads and Google ads because it's the same person that is delivering to them. It really depends on the scale of your business, but I usually recommend having those separately. By creating the process library, pretty much you're creating templates of that service. For example, if you have recurring tasks within the meta ads, then you're going to have them on that meta ads list. So every time you're creating a client account, then those tasks are already on the client's account. So you don't need to create them from scratch. The descriptions are there, all the details are there. So pretty much your process library is like your SOP on how to deliver to your clients. Next, tip number four. Be realistic about the amount of time that the team has available to complete their tasks. On ClickUp, there is a workload view. That means you can see how many hours your team is working. Oftentimes, you're going to see that the team will have tasks for six or seven hours, and you may think that they have even more time to complete tasks, so you may try to delegate even more tasks to them. But in reality, you need to do this exercise. Go over here on a Google Sheet or anywhere really and prepare the list of tasks that the team needs to complete every day. You need to account for lunch break or communication or calls. So that is going to deduct from the amount of hours that someone has available to work on tasks that are within ClickUp. So don't just think in ways that, okay, this person is going to work eight hours, it's going to be straight eight hours, but instead think of all the variables like lunch, calls, some urgent team communication, urgent and client communication. So always aim to have tasks for like five or six hours per day per team member. And let's get to tip number five. You need to create some notifications on your Slack or Discord workspace. So then when a task is blocked or a task is in to be reviewed, then you can trigger the automation and you can notify the reporter timely to either unblock the task or review the task. This will also get the other team members to be alert to take action and get this task to the finish line, which gets me to tip number six. 
Every time you're completing a task in the task comment section, you need to add the output. For example, if you worked on an automation, add the link to the automation and a long video explaining what is going on on the automation. Or if you worked on media buying, then you add the output on the comments. This should not be something that is negotiable. It is really a non-negotiable that the output needs to be on the tasks. Whether it is that you communicated with someone on Slack or on Discord, put a screenshot of that communication and then you can close the ticket. Because if you're just closing tasks, left and right and there is no output then nobody knows really what happened right like the task was closed but for what reason was it because we're not gonna work on it anymore who worked on it what were the conclusions so always always have your team add the output in the activity section or like comments section either as a screenshot as a loom or as a text like hey this task is not relevant anymore i'm going to archive it so this will allow you to have a better structure on clickup and you're going to refer to clickup tasks to see what actually happened in the past and you will have enough context Tip number seven, you need to be using sprints on ClickUp. You can see here an example of how we're using sprints. I also have a specific video referring to how you're going to use sprints from start to finish, but you need to be using sprints to make sure that your team is working on the right things every single week. Think of a sprint like a box, a time box period where you want your team to complete 50 tasks out of 100. And if we do get to complete these 50 tasks, then we have reached the finish line successfully. And if we do this every single week, then we always make progress. So check out the other video that I have about sprints. You're going to learn more about how to leverage sprints within ClickUp and you're gonna make the most out of it. I know a lot of people don't talk about it, but I use sprints every single week with my team for the past three years now. And so I have another bonus tip for you guys. You need to always have tasks over here on ClickUp that start with a verb. For example, do this, update that, edit this, complete that. The reason why you always want to start with a verb and not have like random words there is because you want to make it clear what the action is all about it's an update or if it's to edit something or fix something or troubleshoot or investigate but if you have random tasks like ticket creation then what does that mean then we'll end up having like a bunch of tasks over here on ClickUp that don't make sense and then we may delete the wrong things and keep the wrong things so that is my extra tip for you always start your tasks with a verb because verbs show action so it's going to be clear what you want the user or the assignee to work on so if you're looking to work with ClickUp, this seven plus extra one eighth tip are going to be really helpful to have a solid infrastructure within ClickUp. But if you want me and my team to come and help you with ClickUp and build it out for you, personalize it and customize it to what you need, then you can check the link in the description where I can help you by having a one-on-one -on -one call and then we can see what are the next steps for you. You can also check any other products that we have in the description where you can purchase things as templates. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.